Yo guys, Punk on another video. So about a month, maybe a month and a half ago, I made a video about how to top DPS on Warrior. I intended to make that a series. I've just been really busy and honestly, I haven't really had too much time to write scripts and get really deep into these videos because they take a lot more effort than the average one that I release. But things have calmed down a little bit in my real life and it's time to finish this series. So the first one was the Warrior. Now we're gonna do another class that's not so far off from the Warrior, at least in its playstyle in PvE, the Rogue. I'd say this is probably one of the most popular classes in vanilla. So I'm sure a lot of you guys either have a rogue alt or you've been maining a rogue and hopefully this DPS guide is going to help you guys understand how to top DPS or how to perform to the greatest of your abilities in order to give you that little edge to climb up the ranks in your guild and be a top priority raid member so you can get all of those epic items that your heart desires. Of course, Viscag and Perdition's Blade, right friends? And of course, if you guys feel like I missed out on any information or maybe I misunderstood something or my information is wrong, then feel free to let me know in the comment section but I'm going to give you guys my perspective and everything that I know about topping DPS on a rogue. So without further ado, here's how you top DPS on a rogue. Once again, let's get into it. All right, so rogues are probably one of the best classes for DPS in the entire game. I wouldn't say they're number one, but they're definitely always contending at that range. And what I would give the rogue is that they're definitely the most consistent or probably second to the warrior. Throughout every single content patch, rogues remain at the top of the DPS meter. And if wildly overgeared, they'll out DPS classes that you might think have a slight edge on them. Now the reason why they're not number one or you they can't I guess compete for the absolute number one slot is just because they don't necessarily scale as much as a fury warrior and a fire mage would or even warlocks. Although I'd say they're a higher tier than warlocks they just don't scale in the same way. So fury warriors once you get to AQ 40 you get such an abundance of crit and hit and the way that that scales with your rage generation they just become off the charts. When mages go fire they start stacking ignites and they get more and more crit with spell power and the way that it scales up is just absolutely insane and warlocks of course once they start getting to the gear levels when they can actually reach their hit cap and their spell power starts to climb and climb and climb having their base hit cap plus having all that percentage damage with improved shadow bolt shadow vulnerability from shadow priests ruin 100% crit damage demonic sacrifice shadow mastery they scale in such a ridiculous way the better gear that they get but rogues are kind of more on a horizontal graph where they're always really good and on most damage meters especially on horde side the top of the meter is usually just warriors and rogues with a couple mages scattered throughout rogues maybe don't scale but the one reason i'd say why they're so damn consistent is probably because of slice and dice it's such a ridiculously powerful ability that gives them an incredibly sustained consistent output of damage with the increased haste from it and as your gear gets better and better and better it's whatever damage you're going to do baseline with that 30 percent increased haste so it just goes at a really nice pace there's a couple different specs that you can run as a rogue. First we've got combat swords which is obviously probably the best one especially if you're a human and later on in gear. We've got combat daggers which is basically the exact same thing as combat swords except you're backstabbing and using daggers. And then we've got sealed fate. Sealed fate can be with daggers or with swords or maces or pretty much whatever weapon. Although we're going to stay away from sealed fate spec because you actually need the death dealer set bonus for increased eviscerate percent damage and it's maybe a bit more of a niche and not comparable to the combat specs. So these are the two specs and they basically play the exact same way. So let's go over the rotation and when we go over it basically the only thing that you actually have to change is substitute sinister strike for backstab or backstab for sinister strike depending on what spec you're using. It's really not that complicated in vanilla when it comes to your attack rotation. The idea is to keep up slice and dice at 100% of the time. Use sinister strike or backstab in order to keep generating those combo points and just as obviously filler damage and when you're able to you want to eviscerate. But there's at least a little bit of nuance that you need to understand in order to maximize. The first being that most people will tell you you want to 5 point slice and dice. And this is generally true. In an ideal world, you want to constantly be putting a 5 point slice and dice on your character, having that really long duration, and then doing damage while it's active. But we don't live in a perfect world, and in vanilla, rogues are a little bit energy starved. Also, when you first start out a fight, it takes a while to build up those 5 combo points. So you're not going to spend, let's say, 15-20 seconds trying to build up the 5 combo points while you have zero slice and dice active then slice and dice at five points so what you're going to want to do at the start of the fight is basically sinister strike or backstab once get the little bit of combo points that you get and then start pumping out to get those big combo points so you can get a big slice and dice this is a really important thing that people need to understand as a dagger rogue you have the option of ambushing out of stealth to get those combo points then immediately slice and dicing and going into backstabs and as a combat swords rogue most of the time you're not even going to want to start 
the fight out in stealth at all. You're basically just going to run over as if you're a warrior and first thing you're going to do is Sinister Strike. Let's say you're doing a 20 man Onyxia or you're doing Zolgarub. You can get away with starting off in stealth and getting a Garot considering that a 16 debuff slot limit isn't that big of a deal when you only have a 20 man raid. And in certain scenarios in a 40 man you can also sometimes get away with a Garot just at the start since not every debuff is immediately going to be applied on the target and I have done this in the past it's just kind of like cheat damage out at the start but people will get angry at you and if all of the rogues did it then obviously it doesn't make sense but you can do this in certain situations so if you're really looking to max out sometimes you can grow but <laughs> try not to get into too much trouble doing this now when it comes to expending your combo points for the most part you constantly want to be keeping up your slice and dice so if you get a five point slice and dice up you're generally going to be able to most likely work up to another five points maybe halfway through the duration of your slice and dice you'll get an eviscerate off and then after that you probably won't be able to get back to five points before the full slice and dice is done in order to get a second one applied five points so this is where discretion comes into play you'll have a five point slice and dice then you'll most likely try to push for a five point eviscerate after it especially if you get lucky on procs that are giving you extra energy or giving you extra combo points but generally i'd say the safest place is to maybe four and sometimes five point eviscerate or just five point eviscerate and then get maybe a three point slice and dice after that then you'll have that little slice and dice to buffer you to build up another five combo points and then put a five point onto yourself and then maybe go for another eviscerate after that so it's really something that you have to feel combo point management is super important and where this is obviously super relevant is when you're popping your cooldown so you have adrenaline rush and blade flurry another common mistake that i see a lot is people kind of use them right off the bat this is not something that you want to do you want to work up to them you basically want to start up the rotation exactly the way i described earlier where you're going to get a little quick slice and dice immediately off your first action then you want to build up to five get a big slice and dice going and then you want to pop your cooldowns once you have that nice duration of increased attack speed going to supplement the damage that you're going to pump out with your adrenaline rush and blade flurry this is obviously the most ideal way to do it and when you have adrenaline rush popping that's really when you can start eviscerating like crazy it's going to allow you to generate so much more energy which in turn is going to allow you to get a lot more combo points and this is where you can just keep eviscerating five points without having to worry about your slice and dice timing in respect to using combo points on eviscerate now probably the biggest advantage that rogues have and one reason why they're able to do a tremendous amount of damage on certain boss fights where other people have to hold back is their ability to drop threat there's two classes in the game that can do this there's hunters with disengage and feign death and there's rogues with vanish and faint these are abilities that the average rogue does not utilize properly you've probably seen people doing onyxia and during the first phase they're going to say all right guys slow damage this applies to everybody who's not a hunter and a rogue as a rogue you have the ability to go absolutely all in balls to the wall pumping out as much as you possibly can while continuously fainting every time you have excess energy or pumping out a ton of damage immediately building up close to the tank's threat and then vanishing dropping it all and then you're pretty much free to go for the rest of the fight this is something that you have to utilize to the best of your ability depending on how much damage you do on your opener you might want to vanish before popping your cooldowns so you can just go all in once you have adrenaline rush pumping this will allow you to go into popping your cooldowns without having to worry about threat some rogues will have too much threat and they'll say maybe i won't pop my cooldowns now or i'm just going to slow down for a little bit but you have ways to mitigate that factor and immediately just go in full cooldown without worrying about your threat whatsoever this is something that you have to do it's probably the most important thing to doing a lot of damage on a rogue now when it comes to abilities that you don't want to use you never really want to use expose armor rupture and deadly poison expose armor will actually take off sunder armor you can only have one applied at the same time and sunder armor is just overall better especially considering that it doesn't have to be worked up to and it can be consistently kept on the target for pretty much ever so you never want to use expose armor take off the sunders and have your main tank just yell at you rupture is something that you can use again in 20 mans and it does do a lot a lot of damage it is a dps increase but in a 40 man raid scenario it's just not feasible considering you have a 16 debuff slot limit and deadly poison is the exact same thing you always want to use double instant poison deadly poison is not worth it i think once you get stacked up to five stacks on deadly poison it can compete with instant poisons dps but it's taking a debuff slot and it's not consistent you're not always going to have it at five times stack so instant poison on both weapons is definitely the meta now here's a couple little tricks that i'd say are pretty obvious but let's just mention them anyways when it comes to popping your cooldowns you'll always want to be conscious about when you're popping them let's say you're fighting magmadar and you know that a fear is about to come out or you just started the fight and you see all kinds of rogues just popping all of their cooldowns and then immediately magmadar is going to fear everyone 
and they just lost pretty much half or the entire duration of their adrenaline rush. This is something you want to be conscious of. On fights like that, you want to make sure the mechanic goes through first, absorb the fear, and then pop your cooldowns and go all in. When it comes to Blade Flurry, on certain fights, if you know that ads are going to come out or there's an AoE DPS portion to the encounter, make sure that you save your Blade Flurry for that part of the encounter. It's going to give you a lot more value than the 20% increased attack speed if you're doubling up all of your damage on two targets, obviously like sweeping strikes. The next tip is to not waste your combo points. So on certain boss mechanics, you might have to peel off or if an ad or something's about to die and you have three combo points on it, you might not want to use Eviscerate. You might want to just re-up your slice and dice and then go on to the next target. Or you might actually want to Eviscerate it depending on how many combo points you have and depending on what the next portion of the fight is. But in general, it's just about being conscious of your combo points. If you know that the next boss mechanic is going to force you to move away and maybe stop DPS for a little bit, what's the point of re-upping your slice and dice? If you have three combo points on the target, don't use them. Just back off, stop DPS, let your energy tick back up, and then when you come back in, you're going to have that three combo point buffer, two strikes, five combo points, slice and dice, and then go all in. It's a pretty obvious one, but I'd say it's probably a very common mistake that rogues tend to make. And of course, the next one, we've mentioned it earlier, so we're just going to say it really fast, but make sure you're using your aggro mitigating abilities. Constantly vanish off cooldown, use faint when you have to. Faint is probably the most underutilized spell that a rogue has in general, and just be very conscious about mitigating and controlling your threat, which will allow you to push the DPS a lot harder. All right, now this last trick that you want to use applies to pretty much every melee out there, and even casters as well. We're talking about uptime. This is super, super important on a rogue and a fury warrior. You don't want to waste any time. You need to constantly make sure that right as a target's about to die, you're already headed to the next target or transitioned and already hitting the next target. This is super, super important. Being very efficient with your APM and making sure that your auto attacks are constantly going out since your auto attacks are about 50 to 60% of your total damage is probably the most important thing in general. And I think a lot of raid guilds look at your total aggregate DPS from the start to finish rather than how much you're doing on a boss fight specifically. Obviously, boss damage is really important, but total overall damage is, I'd say, equally as important in vanilla since the whole raid and speed clearing it really fast is probably the meta end game for most hardcore raiding guilds. So this trick is super, super important when it comes to melee. Now, the last thing that we're going to cover is consumables, at least the core. This is what you want to get to absolutely max out in a raid. Mongoose Elixir, Giant's Elixir, Grilled Squid, Juju Might, Juju Power, the 25 agility buff from the Blasted Lands quest line, which I think is called Scorpid Salt or something like that. I'll put it up on the screen. Winterfall Elixir. You can use Dragon's Breath Chili, which is actually pretty good considering how fast you're constantly attacking, especially on a Dagger Rogue. Thistle Tea is super, super important, and this is going to allow you to sometimes compensate for the lack of combo points to keep a five point slice and dice going or to even get up to a five point eviscerate within the period. You can get roids on top of the Scorpid Salt. And of course, obviously the world buffs, Rallying Cry of the Dragon Slayer, Songflower Serenade is something that you should go for by yourself. You don't even really need the raid to do this one. It's something that'll set you apart from other people. Fengus's Ferocity, which is the 200 AP buff that you get from DM North Tribute. War Chief's Blessing, if you're on Horde side. And then once the next phases come along, you can get Sage's Dark Fortune of Damage from the Dark Moon Fair and Spirit of Zandalar from ZG Heart of Makar. So that's the video. And honestly, it's like most classes, there's nothing really super complex about it. It's just about doing the little things and edging above the next guy behind you. Classic is a game of inches. It's not complicated, but the guy who's doing all of the little things and sort of nitpicking and min-maxing is obviously going to do slightly more DPS than the guy below him. But these are the tricks, and this is pretty much how it's done. And honestly, most of it comes from getting the consumables. If you have all of the consumables and you go out of your way to get Songflower Serenade every raid, you're pretty much guaranteed to do more DPS, even if you play slightly worse than the guy next to you who doesn't have all of those buffs. So use the little tricks, farm out the consumables, and you'll be one of the top guys in your raid guild. Now, if you guys like this video and want to see more like it, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, of course, you know the drill soldiers. Hit the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a new video straight out of the render oven. And with that said, hope you top DPS, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.